In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Today we remember Tom and Dorothy Lavin at this Mass. And as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call upon the Lord to grant us his mercy and the forgiveness of our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast, even now, to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great, and their sin is so grave, that I must go down and see whether or not their actions fully correspond to the cry against them that comes to me. I mean to find out. While Abraham's visitors walked on farther toward Sodom, the Lord remained standing before Abraham. Then Abraham drew near and said, Will you sweep away the innocent with the guilty? Suppose there were 50 innocent people in the city. Would you wipe out the place rather than spare it for the sake of the 50 innocent people within it? Far be it from you to do such a thing to make the innocent die with the guilty, so that the innocent and the guilty would be treated alike. Should not the judge of all the world act with justice? The Lord replied, if I find 50 innocent people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abram spoke up again, see how I am presuming to speak to my Lord, though I am but dust and ashes. What if there are five less than 50 innocent people? Will you destroy the whole city because of those five? He answered, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. But Abraham persisted saying, what if only 40 are found there? He replied, I will forbear it doing it for the sake of the 40. Then Abraham said, let not my Lord grow impatient if it go on. What if only 30 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it if I can find but 30 there. Still Abraham went on, since I have thus dared to speak to my Lord, what if there are no more than 20? The Lord answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 20. But he still persisted. 
Please let not my Lord grow angry if I speak up this last time. What if there are less than ten there? He replied, For the sake of those ten, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial song, Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Because of your kindness and your truth, for you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. The Lord is exalted, yet the lowly he sees, and the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk amid distress, you preserve me. Against the anger of my enemies, you raise your hand. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you were buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And even when you were dead in transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he brought you to life with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, obliterating the bond against us with its legal claims, which was opposed to us, he also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us, and do not subject us to the final test. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey, and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give the visitor the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs 
because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish, or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. When thinking about the readings this Sunday, it struck me that the gospel contains a pretty, pretty wide open promise, a pretty significant thing for the Lord to say when he says, ask and you will receive. And he doesn't say what you ask for. In other words, if you ask for something, you will receive it. And the reason why I say that's a pretty, pretty big deal is, well, what if, you, what if you ask for something maybe the Lord doesn't want? And you'd say, well, Lord, I'd really like to have a million dollars. Is that good for you? Okay, but, but he says, ask and you will receive. Or if I was to change that parable around, <clears throat> if the person goes late at night, not to ask for three loaves of bread because I have a friend coming in from out of town, but he says, so he goes and knocks late at night and says, here, give me a weapon because I want to take vengeance against an enemy of mine. What if he was to ask for that? He says, well, ask and you will receive. One of the things that I think uh, as I was pondering this is that a lot of times I think we do get what we ask for. And we do find what we seek. And sometimes we don't always seek for things that are themselves good. Now, the Lord also told us in the gospel today that our Father in heaven knows what is good for you, and the Lord will provide those things that, in fact, are for your good. But when we seek things that I think are not for our good, if we seek things that are more selfish just for our own ends, then I think that we'll receive them, but we won't receive them from the Lord. Um, it's the world that will grant us the things that we seek that are actually for our own destruction. And so this actually is, in some ways, really a very stark uh, lesson for us to learn. So be careful what you ask for, be careful what you seek, be careful at which door you knock, because you might just get the very thing that you're looking for. Please God, may it be something that is a good thing. Um, if we live according to the law of the Lord, like the um, gospel says today, when we hear the words of the Our Father, well, we want to do things that are in accord with God's will, not my will. We want to seek his kingdom, that his kingdom may come, not our kingdom. That we want to glorify his name, hallowed be his name, not our own name. But it's so tempting, I think, for us to think in selfish terms um, and to put the focus on what we wish, what we desire, and that can be all the more to our own detriment, to our harm, if we allow that to take root, uh, if we think in too selfish a way. Part of the reason I thought of that is because with the first reading that we have today, we have Abraham pleading for um, the Lord to have mercy. If there are a certain number of just people, 50 or even as few as 10, would you spare a city? But this is all within the context of sparing a specific city, and that specific city was Sodom. We think of Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, Abraham is concerned because he knows that his nephew Lot is living in that territory, and so he's concerned for the sake of his nephew Lot. He says, well, is Lot going to be swept away? Except he doesn't ask just for Lot, would you save Lot? Uh, in sp in specifically, he's asking in general then, well, what about righteous people? And Abraham knows, I think, as, as much as anyone knew in that time, that the reputation from Sodom and Gomorrah was not good. Um, and so could there be 50 righteous people? Well, perhaps Abraham was insisted on keeping going with that number, lowering it and lowering it, because he says, you know what, there probably aren't 50, 50 good people in Sodom and Gomorrah. We better go for a lower number, because I don't think Sodom has a chance if they have to come up with 50. He gets all the way down to 10, and if you know the rest of the story, Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, it perished, which means that there were not even 10 righteous people in that town. 
And this was uh, Genesis chapter 18 that we heard today. And all you have to do is pick up your Bible and turn to the next chapter, chapter 19, and you'll hear the outcome of the story. Um, the Lord says he was going to check this out. He's going to examine uh, the outcry that he hears to determine if their sins were as grave as he had heard. So he sent two messengers. He actually sent two angels who appeared in the form of men who came to visit Sodom and Gomorrah. They, uh, Lot found them and he welcomed them into his home. He said, oh, we'll stay here. Let me, uh, let me offer you hospitality. And so they come into his home. But the people of the town, and Genesis 19 uh, says this, he says, to a man, meaning the entire town, came out and they saw that there were these two visitors here, these two men who had come to visit Lot. And they demanded at the door. You might say they knocked at the door. Knock and the door will be open. Ask and you will receive. What did they ask for? They said, bring out these men that we may have our way with them. And a lot was very offended by this. He says, well, no, these are my guests. I, I, they are in my house. They are guests in my house. So then Lot does something that maybe we would kind of find a little uh, strange or a little uh, unexpected. He says, look here, I have two daughters who are innocent and pure. Take them. <laughs> he says, I'll bring out my daughters. You can have your way with my daughters. Do not touch these men who are under my protection. And, but that's not good enough for the crowd. They say, no, no, no. We insist that you bring out the men that are in your house. And because you've resisted us, not only will we have our way with them, but we are also going to do even worse to you, Lot. And at this point, then the two angels and the appearance of men, basically, let's just say that their task is done. They've examined it, and Sodom and Gomorrah is about as bad as they had, had heard. So he brings Lot back into the house. They cause a blinding light to stun the people outside the house. And then these angels then drag, they, they, they do everything they can to drag Lot and his wife, their two daughters, and then the two sons-in-law who are engaged to the, the two daughters. They want to drag them out of the, out of the city. So if Sodom and Gomorrah is not to be spared because all they could find were six righteous people and that wasn't ten. So just six righteous people, if they could drag them out of the city, well, then the city itself was going to fall, but at least in God's mercy, Lot would be spared. What about the two sons-in-law? They didn't believe. They didn't believe the angels when they said what was going to happen. Ask and you will receive. Don't ask and you won't receive. They made their choice. So they decided to stay behind. They, they did not believe the warning that was given, and so they perished. Um, so they were lost. And so it was just Lot, his wife, and then the two daughters who left uh, from that town and who were taken away. But you might say that then the people who were knocking at the door, the people who were asking for the satisfaction of their own carnal desires, you might say they got what they asked for, or they got the consequences of what they asked for. And this is, I think, one of the, the warnings that we have, is that we can seek after things that are for our good, things that are according to righteousness, things that are, uh, will help us to grow in holiness. And the Lord wishes to grant those things to us, and so the Lord will help us. If we ask the Lord to bring us closer to him, then the Lord will grant that. If we ask for things that are going to satisfy our own base desires, if what we seek is power, or if we seek money, or if we seek pleasure, if these are the things that we desire, well, they'll be granted to us by the world. Uh, but, you know, in such a way that we oftentimes, I think, suffer the consequences of those bad choices. So let us then take heed. This is an important thing for us to consider and ask. And how is it that Lot got into this situation in the first place? This, too, actually is an interesting story, and it goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 13. Um, so you have your homework today. These are, these are wonderful passages to pick up and read. So Genesis 13 and 19 fill, fill out the rest of the story from today's passage. But uh, it comes from the time at which Abram and Lot both had large uh, collections of flocks, and they were in the, in the land together. But the problem is that they both had such large flocks that there was not enough pasture for them to graze. They said, well, this isn't working. We're running, we're in conflict with one another. So Abram and Lot then say, well, then let us separate. You go one way, I'll go the other. If you wish to go right, I'll go left. Lot, if you wish to go north, I'll go south. And so the choice is given to Lot. So choose. Lot, you get to choose. Ask, and you will receive. What did he ask for? Well, he looked around, and he saw in one direction a wide and inviting plain with fertile land. He says, I'll choose that path. And Abram went in the other direction. Where did Lot go? That wide and fertile path 
which is also where Sodom and Gomorrah were. Lot chose the easier path. He chose that wide path. Remember what Jesus says about that? He says, seek after the narrow path. Narrow is the path that leads to life. Wide and inviting is the road that leads to destruction. So already in Genesis, you can say there's an example of that very parable put into practice in the example of Lot. He chose that easy path, but it was one that very easily also led to corruption and even to sin. Um, and so that, that's the, what was present in the territory where he went. And so there is another lesson, to be careful about what we choose. Sometimes we might think, well, I just want to choose the easy path. I want something that's going to, going to um, be the most satisfying direction for me to go in. And maybe that's not always the right choice to make. Sometimes the right choice is to choose the more challenging path, to, to make the more difficult decision. Um, because in some cases, that's more enriching, to choose the path that actually leads to the cross can in some ways perhaps be more life-giving than that easier path that we can sometimes uh, select. So there we have step before us, ask, seek, knock, and so the choice is put to us. What will we choose? We choose according to the Lord's will that his kingdom might come, that his will will be done. That's the best path that we can choose. That's the best, best course that we could follow. St. Paul puts it this way when he writes to the Colossians. He says, you were buried with Christ in the death of baptism. And it is Christ who has raised you from the dead. And the transgressions <clears throat> that you had committed before have now been obliterated. That bond against us with its legal claims has been obliterated. It has been removed from our midst because it has been nailed to the cross. So don't go back to live an old way of life. Therein is the challenge that we have set before us. You have been claimed by Christ and you are called to live a new life with Christ. So choose Christ. Choose the path that leads to life. Choose the path that leads to righteousness. It, it's an important thing, I think, to also think about the power that Abraham had. Remember, the Lord said, he says, should I tell Abraham what I'm thinking about doing? And the Lord explained to Abraham, I'm checking, I'm going to check to see if it's if Sodom and Gomorrah as bad as they are. And Abraham had an opportunity then to intercede. Not to intercede for the wicked people, but he was interceding for those who were just. Don't sweep away the just. Abraham prayed and God listened. The, it's a remarkable thing for us to consider that we also have the capacity to intercede and pray for, and prayers are powerful, to pray for uh, righteousness. Uh, not only that we should seek it for ourselves, but we can also be concerned for our world around us, um, that people grow in righteousness and that the righteous, in fact, not be punished. Think also about the lesson that we got from that reading, is that 10 righteous people, just 10 righteous people would have saved that entire town. That town could have been saved, but there weren't even 10 righteous people. Imagine our own city or our own country. Think of just a small number of righteous people. We, we think sometimes that we have such an uphill battle in our culture. Um, things seem so difficult. He says, well, what, where's the hope of turning things around, just even within our world, with worldly values and with um, the, the uh, desires of the present age? He says, it seems like it's a lost cause, an uphill battle, something that just cannot be won. Not true. The power of prayer and the witness of even a small number of truly righteous people can, in fact, change, change things and work miracles. Um, it's a powerful lesson, then, for us to take to heart, not just simply for ourselves. Let us make good choices. Let us choose those things that will be truly helpful for us and truly for our good. But let us also intercede for our world around us. Let us be a witness to the gospel, a witness that can, in fact, make great change and have great effect on the world around us. And let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We present our prayers and petitions. That a deepening of prayer may spread throughout the church on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the planners of economy and industry may turn to the Father who gives us our daily bread. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people caught in unlawful and sinful ways may seek forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may persist in prayer, no matter how discouraged we may be in life's misfortunes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may be forgiven and raised up with Christ, especially Claudius Bima, Mark Paul, Robert Bremer, and Judy Campbell. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the protection of our religious liberties. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who roam throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Thank you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Louis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Today's Gospel, Jesus taught us to pray, and so at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away this world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away this world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away this world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away this world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, a few announcements. The Women's Care Center will be opening a new location next month. Um, there is some information that you'll see in the bulletin about ways that we can support that, but in particular, um, the Women's Care Center is conducting a diaper drive, and you'll see the table in the narthex, including some information about uh, the Women's Care Center and what they're doing. They're also collecting hardy bucks from Hair Nursery, if you have those, um, or, or any other contributions which um, they will appreciate, and, and it can be brought in uh, even up until the middle of August, um, either to the parish office or in the collection. So. Um, so I appreciate your support of that endeavor. Um, also, for those who may need to register for CCD, that still continues. Um, so if you happen to have or know of grade school children uh, who don't have their religious education provided for through a, a Catholic school, uh, we'd encourage them to take part in CCD to make sure that they do receive the instruction, especially preparations for the sacraments of initiation that they need. Uh, this Wednesday, be healthy with a run walk. So with a with a fun run, a fun walk at Donovan Park, uh, beginning at 6.30, so to celebrate health and fitness. So 25 years of priesthood and let's be healthy. So for my sake, for your sake, this is a good thing. So, so it's, all, it's free to participate. We encourage people, um, if you're available Wednesday evening, so if you'd like to come out, please do so. Uh, we uh, thank you for your support of St. Thomas Parish through the contributions left in the purple baskets. We pray for those who are homebound, Almighty God, bless those who carry the body of Christ to absent brothers and sisters. May this sacrament and our union of prayer be a source of strength for them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We honor the Blessed Mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.